So this is a quick review of properties of logarithms for pre-calc and calc students. So if you kind of remember this, but you feel like you forgot a lot of it, I'm going to review a ton of stuff. And by the way, I have free guided notes at divideandconquermath.com. I highly recommend them for this video. Now, if you are rusty, I recommend that you take an active role watching this video. So write things down and then also try exercises as I suggest. That's going to be the best way for you to really review. If you don't hit the pause button, if you don't try to do this, then it's, it's not going to help. Math is not a spectator sport. So you, you really got to kind of get your hands dirty if you really want to review this. Okay, so let's start with just what is a logarithm. A lot of people forget the basic definition. So to start here, um, really the big thing that you need to know is so a logarithm actually has its exponential form. So if I have this log base a of x equals y, that is the same thing as a to the y equals x. So I take this base and then this is going to be the exponent and then this is all going to equal x. Okay, so first things first, if you are rusty on that, I highly recommend that you pause the video here and try to write these out as a log. So if you need to pause, write out this so that you have it in front of you and then just force yourself to do this for two exercises and then hit play when you're ready. Okay, so as a log, this is going to be log base 2 of 8 equals 3. And then for this other one, so this is going to be log base 25 of 5 equals 1 half. And so that would be the logarithmic form for each one of these. Okay, so now going the other direction, once again, I recommend that you pause the video here and now write this in exponential form. Hit play when you're ready. So in this case, this is going to be 7 squared equals 49, and then this one's going to be 3 to the 0 equals 1. Now, I actually think that going in exponential form is a little bit easier just because this should be a statement that you know is true. 7 squared does equal 49. So if you ever get thrown off as to like what goes where, it should, it should result in a true mathematical statement. Okay, so the next thing I just want to brush up on are some common logs. So if you see log x without a number right here, that means log base 10 of x universally. This is what it means on calculators. This is what it means everywhere else. If you see log x, it means log base 10. And the other one is natural log. So this ln of x, this means log base e, and we call it the natural logarithm. Okay, so the next thing that I want to review with you are some key properties of logarithms. So you have to let x, y, and a be positive numbers, a is not equal to 1, and r will be a real number, and, and we get a couple of nice properties here. So these are three of the main properties of logarithms that get used all the time. Again, if you're rusty, I recommend that you pause the video here and write these down. And I'm going to show you another page of these. Um, so, so this page is talking about... You know, if you've got two things multiplied together, you can add them. If you're dividing them, then you can rewrite them as subtraction. And then for powers, you can pull the power down in front of the logarithm. And then I also have another list of properties here. So these come up from time to time. So again, you can pause the video here. We actually already used one of these properties. We used this one right here. This was one of the exercises that we just did. But again, um, if you are rusty on these, you can pause, write them down. We're going to use them all in a second to really force you to remember how, to, how they work. And by the way, if you are finding this content helpful, please consider liking my video, subscribing to my channel, sharing it with a friend. Um, I'm really trying to create a high quality resource for free math help on the internet. And so every little bit that you guys do really helps me out. Okay. So what I want to do next is I want to just go through a couple of exercises of forcing you to use those logarithmic properties. So these two pages that I just showed you, if you don't have those written down and you're still really rusty, you might want to go ahead and pause here and write them down. Okay, so let's jump into the first one. I'll do this first one with you and then you can, you can do the next ones. Okay, so in this case, I have these terms really being all multiplied together, which means I could break all of these up with addition. So this would be log of three, log of x, and then log of y to the seventh. And then this power to the seventh can come out in front. So ultimately, if I wanted to expand this as far as possible, this would be log three plus log x plus seven log of y. Okay, so I highly recommend that you now pause the video and give this one a try and then hit play when you're ready. Okay, 
So for this one, there's a couple different ways that you can kind of break this down. So I, I will go in steps here. So first things first, I recommend breaking this up so that you have kind of the, the division part broken out. So notice I've got the top minus the bottom now. And then I can break, so this is really being multiplied together and these are being multiplied together. So I can now use the product rule to help me with this. So this will be log of 10 plus log of x cubed minus, now notice I have to use parentheses here so that this minus sign counts towards the entire denominator. So this will be log y to the 10th plus log of z. And so now there's a couple more things I can do. So first of all, I can distribute this, this negative, so I'm gonna do that. I can also bring these powers out in front. And then finally, this is log of 10. So remember, this really means log base 10 of 10. So this is just going to equal, if I go back to my list of properties here, so when you have log, a of, uh, log base a of a, that just equals one. So that's exactly what this is gonna equal here. So my final answer then will become one plus three log base x minus 10 log base y, uh, log of y minus log of z. And so now I wanna remind you of a little shortcut with this actually. So notice that the two things that were in the denominator both ended up with minus signs. So as you're breaking this up, really anything that's in the denominator, you can just automatically give that a minus sign. So you, you could actually kind of speed up this process. Anything on top gets a plus sign, anything on the bottom gets a minus sign. You can always rely on that. Okay, so I have one more example here. So again, I highly recommend that you pause the video here and then hit play when you're ready. All right, so in this case, I've got the natural log and notice I've kind of got this, this cube root here. So this I really know is a rational exponent. So first things first, I'm just gonna bring that out in front. And so now I am left with this problem. And then I can break all of this up by using the product rule. So I've got one third times the natural log of two plus the natural log of x plus the natural log of y to the fourth. And then I can go ahead and distribute this in and also bring this power out in front. So this will be one third natural log of two, one third natural log of x plus four thirds natural log of y. And so that's as far as that one will expand. Okay, so now to just wrap up the review here. So now I have just a couple of problems where I want you to write these as a single logarithm. And sometimes it will be the case where you can simplify these a bit after you kind of write them as a single log. So once again, I'm gonna show you how to do the first one and then I'm gonna turn you loose on the other two. I highly recommend that you pause and try them. Okay, so thinking back to what I know about logarithms, so this is subtraction here. So I can see that these are gonna be divided by one another. And then since I have this two in front here, this could actually be a power that goes back on top of X. So let me take this in two steps. First, I have the natural log of three minus the natural log of X squared. And then I have the natural log of three over X squared. So one thing to notice, this is now a singular logarithm, right? It would not be the natural log of three over the natural log of x squared. That is not what the property says. It would be this singular logarithm here. Okay, so I highly recommend that you pause the video here and then hit play when you're ready. All right, so if I take this into pieces, this is gonna be the natural log of two to the fourth plus the natural log of y to the fifth minus the natural log of x to the third. Now, if you remember, I said that if you have a plus sign, then that means that you go in the numerator, and if you have a minus sign, then you go in the denominator. So I can actually finish this problem using kind of that logic to write this as the natural log of two to the fourth, y to the fifth over x to the third, and I can rewrite two to the fourth then as 16. So this will now be um, 16, y to the fifth over x to the third. So that would be the most simplified singular logarithm that I can write. Okay, and so now for this final one. So this one's gonna be a little bit tricky. Take your time, but this is a great one for review, and then hit play when you're ready. Okay, so if I wanna take this in pieces, so the first thing that I'm gonna do is, I, I don't wanna do too much too fast here because maybe it's a little overwhelming to look at all of the stuff I have to do. So I want you just to notice how I have started this. I went ahead and rewrote all of these with their exponents. And so notice when I brought this one half up here, 
So I wrote this now as three over two because the, the two is obviously, that's obviously in the denominator of this um, exponent. So you can multiply these together if that happens. And just to make this a little bit easier on myself, one other thing that I'm gonna do, I'm gonna rewrite this as um, two. So four, four to the one half is just two. Okay, so now I can go ahead and finish this. I'm, I'm in the home stretch again. So anything that has a plus sign is going to go in the numerator and anything that has a minus sign will go in the denominator. So using that logic, this is gonna be two y to the three halves over y to the seventh. And now you'll notice that actually I have y on top, y on bottom, so I can technically simplify this. So now I wanna rewrite this y to the seventh. I wanna rewrite the seven as 14 over two so that I can go ahead and simplify these exponents. So I have more y's on the bottom than on the top, so I'm gonna subtract three over two from the 14 over two, so this is gonna equal log two over y to the 11 over two, and so that would be my final answer in this case. And so that's it for your crash course reminder of everything with logarithms. So if you feel like this was not a, a enough of a review, then I highly recommend that you actually go back and you know, choose the topic that you're struggling with the most. I have videos on logarithms, just the intro to them and rebuilding all that up. And then I have entire videos where I talk about properties of logarithms. So I, ha I will drop links to all of those in the description of this video. Um, but otherwise, if you found this helpful, please consider giving me a like or subscribing to my channel. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.